I'm Adam Sparkman, a client portfolio manager with Thornburg Investment Management. Today, we're continuing our observations in fixed income and global equity series. I'm joined by Ben Kirby and Jeff Klingelhofer, co-heads of investment for Thornburg Investment Management. Ben, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us today. So the first quarter was ended on a particularly volatile note with the impact of rising rates spurring the closure of two U.S. banks as well as the takeover of Credit Suisse. Ben, from your perspective, uh, what do you think this has on the outlook of equities through the rest of the year? Uh, thanks, Adam. Great question. Uh, so surprisingly, uh, risk assets are actually up since the banks failed. I think that's mostly because rates are lower, uh, which has been a tailwind for equity valuations. I think the longer term implication of the banking scare, you know, we might get a few more banks uh, that, that, that go out of business. It's probably not going to be a broad based banking contagion. The broader implication, I think, is going to be tighter credit conditions. Um, so banks are going to be much more likely to raise their lending standards. So I think even though rates are lower, tighter lending standards will tend to reduce money supply in the economy. And that should be a headwind for stocks going forward. So Jeff, from your perspective, where does Chairman Powell and the Fed go from here? My view is it's business as, as normal um, at the Fed. I think the Federal Reserve has stated very clearly their intention is to create a classic credit cycle, right? They're trying to raise rates. They're trying to raise rates to bring inflation down. Part of the transmission mechanism and, and the reason why the economy has been so incredibly strong looking backward is the advent of lower rates and, 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 and easy credit conditions. So look, I've joked before that when the Federal Reserve came in uh, on Saturday morning to solve the banking contagion crisis, which they ultimately did by uh, insuring and backstopping depositors, the first thing they did was toast each other with mimosas and say, mission accomplished, right? Not that they wanted Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank to fail, but what they did want to see is the effect of higher rates actually exerting itself in the real economy. And the reality is, is that after these bank failures, what we've seen is a pretty significant pullback and in, 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 uh, tightening in credit conditions. What we're seeing is, is ultimately the, the tightening of credit conditions work in a very normalized way, and, and the Federal Reserve is, uh, it's, it's business as normal. So Ben, you know, to the point that you made, equities have, have broadly shrugged off the turmoil, looked through it, indices kind of across geographies, put up really strong returns in Q1, and the S&P is now trading at north of 18 times forward-looking earnings. Uh, from your perspective, do you think equities are getting ahead of themselves, kind of looking past all of the, the turmoil? Sure, so it's, it's always hard to say. Look, stocks go up seven years out of 10, um, and valuation is, a notoriously difficult short-term uh, timing indicator. On the long term though, valuation is actually really important. And so starting at this level is not very auspicious for long-term equity returns uh, since, you know, since we're above average. That said, when you look at uh, stocks outside the U.S., valuations are a lot lower. Europe is normally a 15% discount to the U.S. Today, it's a 30% discount to the U.S. There's also some sectors that we think are still pretty interesting. So as you think about the economy slowing, uh, you want to be probably positioning in some of those sectors that are going to be a bit more defensive. So I would think something like, like telecoms or healthcare uh, that we own in a lot of our portfolios, especially if you can find those, those stocks that aren't uh, highly valued. So something is you know, sort of at market multiple or lower, then you get protection on the multiple front and also protection on the earnings front. We think that's a good place to be positioned as you, as you look for the rest of the year.